Uh, how are you all? Hope you're well. Welcome to the channel if you're new. And the love stories. Got my coffee. My darling wife has just gone back up to Loughborough for four or five days. Help a friend out and then she's moving the last couple of bits down here. She'll be here next week and living here. I'm exhausted. Been a hard week. Work. Well, not the work hasn't been hard. Uh, anyway, I'll tell you on the live stream and all the rest at the end of the week. Where are we? Love story. John and Zoe are in Hua Hin. They've just been to a guy's house to look at it. And uh, this is John's friend friend. Who's desperate to sell. Broke up with his Thai partner going back to Europe. Agreed a price, four million baht for a two bedroom L-shaped villa with a swimming pool and a garage, furniture thrown in, a scooter thrown in, and all the other tools and bits and pieces, the whole lot. The guy just wants to walk away with his suitcase. Fair enough. This happens quite a lot in Thailand. People have become disillusioned. Either they don't like the heat, the food, they break up with their partners, they miss home. And they do, they walk away from properties and possessions and girlfriends and can lose quite a lot of money. Now, John's friend friend is agreed the sale. That day, they've been at the house, they head back to John's friend's house and uh, they agree that the guy will ring John's friend later with the time for the lawyers in the morning and the lawyers down in the town. That evening, uh, John asks his friend and his friend's missus and Zoe to go out for a nice meal and they all go off out for a fun restaurant, have a lovely evening, a few drinks. Night goes by. Next morning, phone call, 10.30, lawyers down in town. John's friend knows where it is. They jump in the car, head down there. Now, John's friend, friend's lawyer is a Swedish Thai guy, lawyer. Uh, speaks Thai, speaks Swedish, speaks English and uh, other languages. And it's quite a big office. There's about four lawyers in there and there's probably 30 or 40 staff. Quite a big lawyer's uh, office. The, <laughs> what actually happened is, yep, John and his friend and Zoe go down, they meet the guy, talk to the lawyer. John's, the, the guy selling the place has already spoke to the lawyer and just said, look, this is a quickie, get it sorted. Now, what the guy hadn't realised is, and his lawyer obviously put him straight, that by selling the property, there is fees involved, land transfer and all the rest of it. And it's a few hundred thousand baht. Um, but he doesn't want to gamble losing the sale because of it. And he says to John's friend and John, look, it's actually a few hundred thousand is going to cost me to sell this. But I'm going to take the hit because I just want to get gone. So you've got an even better deal. So John's really happy. He's like, OK, it's not costing him anything. Four million baht and that's it. Uh, John talks to this lawyer briefly and asks him you know which is the quickest way and the lawyer says we do everything this young lady with you your partner will put the property in her name on the deeds on the Chinook Chinute or whatever you pronounce it which is um, freehold that Thai person can own the land and the property and everything straightforward transfer at the land office just a bit of two in a fro and can be a couple of hours waiting around. But this lawyer's got friends and friends and a bit of money changes hands and it gets done quickly. So John agrees. Um, he's got online banking. And the lawyer says that he'll send Zoe with one of his secretaries and another girl down to the land office where with John's friend. John's friend, friend. <laughs> they all go down there. They all go down there and sign it and uh, get it all transferred. 
And as soon as it transferred, they'll come back up and then it'll do the money transfer. Um, and John's fine with this and John's friends like fine with this and the seller and all the rest of it. So all agreed. Lawyer sends everyone off. So it's just John and his friend and the lawyer there. And uh, at no point has John really talked about the legalities. Now, I have done some videos on the channel. People who want to look into all that. But the way Thailand currently is, and in the past, foreigners can't own land or property. You can buy a condo. You can have, uh, as long as 51% of the condos, I believe, are Thai. You can buy a condo, but you don't own the land it's sat on. There are ways of setting a bogus company up and lots of bogus directors and all this sort of thing. You hear all the stories. There are ways of doing it, setting companies up and buying property in Thailand, but uh, I won't go into all that. You can search around and uh, find all that information out or talk to a lawyer in Thailand. Anyway, this lawyer, John, just briefly asked him a few questions about transfer and owning the land and all the rest of it. And the lawyer told him, the easiest way is your partner. And this will be done in a couple of hours. You'll all, it'll all be yours. Um, and you can always do setup of companies and stuff later and... Uh, put it in the company name if you want to do that but this is uh, not a lot of money this property so it's up to you because by the time you've done all those setups and stuff it adds up a lot of money and if you ever change your mind in the future want to dissolve the company it's a lot of money as well and taxes to pay and accounts every year so John's like oh well, this is just the easy way the girls down at the Land office, phone call comes to the lawyer. It's all done, we're on our way back. So the lawyer turns around to uh, John and his friend and said, right, time to transfer the money. Transfer it to us and we'll then pass it on straight to the whoever the guy's name is. So he's got a phone. He hasn't got a laptop, uh, John, or that I know of anyway. And he goes on and it's like, giving him problems because it's a large amount of money and it's not letting him do it. Luckily, it's a, uh, well, maybe it's a Bangkok bank, whichever bank. And the lawyer says, look, when the girl comes back, I'll send you across the road. Your bank's over there, one of them. You can go in there and they'll do the transfers and everything for you. They'll come back. The lawyer sends John and the girl over the road, go to the bank. And you know someone in the bank anyway. Anyway, after about 30 minutes, mucking around it's not his bank it's his bank but it's not his branch but anyway after proving everything um he manages to get the transfer done to the lawyer and he comes back over with the girl all done the lawyer and the owner previous owner of the bungalow basically turn around and say that's it it's all yours and zoe's got the receipts and stuff and the proper paperwork will come through um, we'll use that address for the post and you'll get the Chinook and everything through the post or you can come here and collect it and we can be your lawyer for the future. And John said, yeah, that makes sense. We'll come here and collect it and we'll sign up with you and uh, you can take care of us. And the lawyer's like, okay, great. Transfer, they got each other's phone numbers and all the details. He said, okay, well, one of my girls will give you a ring when everything's in. It's yours now. Everything inside, everything, bike and everything. We've just got to get the owner to sign a couple of bits of paper and documents for the bike. Um, and we've done a little draft letter for all the belongings in the house. So everything's yours. That'll take about 20 minutes and then you'll all be done. So that all goes through. And that's it. John, no, Zoe, now owns a two-bedroom villa with a pool in Hua Hin. She's his cleaner. She's been a cleaner for, what, a month? And she's a very pretty girl. <laughs> why? Oh, why? You hear this story all the time. Anyway. Everything's done. The guy who previously owned the bungalow says, thank you so much to John. You're an absolute star. You've helped me out. And uh, 
uh, gives him all the keys and he's like I got my suitcase in uh, downstairs he said I'm done everything's done everything in the place is yours there's even stuff in the fridge for you and the guy has got a suitcase and that's it and he's heading off back to Europe obviously the lawyers would have known but the land officer would have known about uh, if there was any mortgage or money owing on everything they check all that so that was all good everything above board very simple transfer because it's going straight to a Thai person it's quite easy and if you know the right people at the land office and lawyers they can do it in hours they'll charge you but they do it so there we go all done John Zoe a proud owner of a new home in Hawaii have the keys and uh, this is only the second day they're in Hawaii and they've already come in for a couple of days John's friend's over the moon. He's like, wow, well, what do you want to do? <laughs> you've now got a new home in Hawaii and you've got a home in Patea. And John's like, yeah, I haven't really thought about that. Um, I need to move. I haven't got much stuff, but I've got a scooter. John's friend, uh, no problem. He said, what we can do is... I'll drive my pickup truck round to Patea. We'll put the scooter on the back and anything you've got. And then I'll bring you back round. And John's like, fantastic. Okay. Uh, I've got a return ticket on the ferry. No, he hasn't. He hasn't got a return ticket, did he? He didn't buy one. So he hasn't got a return ticket. So yes, he can do that easily. <laughs> John's friend. Do you want to go to your new house then and uh, have a look around? Now it's all yours. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. And Zoe's just over the moon. John's friend gives them a lift up to the house. They open up the doors and go in. And now he's suddenly got a swimming pool he's got to maintain. <laughs> but luckily he's Australian and they know, Aussies know how to do swimming pools. He's got a bike in the garage. There's probably helmets kicking around. They've got transport. Zoe's running around looking in every cupboard and, oh, we got this, oh, we got that. It's just like a whirlwind. It's just unbelievable. So quick. And John's like, wow, I just can't believe this. He said, but I'm going to have to give a month's notice on my place in Patia. Um So... Really, the best thing to do is, to his friend, he said, we'll go back, I'll give the notice in, and we'll move over in a month's time when it's all done. John's friend like, okay, no problem. Sounds good. And then, right, let's lock the place up and uh, go back to yours. And then... That's it. Next day we'll head back to Patia. So that's what they do. Go back to John's friends. Another meal or whatever. Next morning, says thanks. And John's friends like, thank you so much for helping my friend out. And this is fabulous. Now you're going to come and live in Hua Hin. We'll be able to see each other all the time. This would be brilliant. And you've got two bikes. You've got a bike in Patia and a bike here. So you and Zoe can zoom around together all around Hua Hin. And John's like, yeah got a lovely beach to walk and he says I'll go back give notes in and then we'll arrange for you to come and get help me get my scooter and get it round there and he said I've literally only got a few suitcases full of stuff anyway so he said uh, we'll see how it goes and that's how they left it next morning Zoe over the moon and John get a lift by his friend down to the port well, it, actually, it's afternoon, I think. Um, yeah, I think it's actually afternoon they go back over. But anyway, they go back over to Patia. Brilliant. How easy is that? He's gone to Wahim for two days. Likes Wahim. He's bought a house. Just cash. Four million baht. Now, if you've got that sort of money... That was a great deal for him. And uh, 
yeah but then you've got to ask the questions is there any twists and turns coming what could possibly go wrong why would you put a property in your cleaner's name after four weeks together it's just a disaster potentially waiting to happen well will it happen we'll see hmm four weeks cleaning now she owns a house four million bar in Hawaii a villa with a pool and a scooter because that's going to be in her name as well probably unless he was uh, clever enough to put it in his name <laughs> hmm Let's leave it there. I'll catch you on the next one. <sighs> Some people, it's just unbelievable. But he's got plenty of money. What's four million back to him? What's four million back to Zoe? See you next time. Bye-bye.